I'm Rich Mullerwein, uh, Director of Operations at Sideview LLC. I got a non-Splunk background in a lot of infrastructure that isn't networking, like Active Directory, DCP, DNS, SQL, all kinds of things like that, monitoring, and I got into Splunk a handful of years ago. I'm a four-time now Splunk Trust member, and I'm also the Docs Feedback Champion from a couple of years ago. We and this started. is my daughter, Evie. We started? Yes, go. We're um, all going. I'm Evelyn Malawan. I'm a seventh grade student at Three Lakes Elementary School. My hobbies are water skiing and downhill skiing, making crafts, and sewing. And I don't like cleaning my room. We forgot to There's change a slide. the slide. <laughs> when I was first certified as the youngest Splunk user, so. Sheesh, All right, well, let's. Oh, yep, disclaimers. Um, this basically says don't believe us um, because it's probably just a lie or at least a figment of our imagination. So. All righty. So this one's mine. Regex, what is it and why should you care? All right. So very specifically, regex is a sequence of characters that define a search pattern. Um, they're otherwise known as regular expressions. Uh, they can be used to find data, extract information out of other data, sometimes just validate things, but they just do pattern matching on strings. And the reason it's important is because it's behind the scenes a lot of what Splunk does to make useful information out of that raw event streams that you're feeding it. So, and if you don't believe me, you can look at any non-trivial app, open up props.com, and you'll probably see a whole string of this stuff. That's all regular expressions. So they're all over the place inside there, and if you haven't seen them yet, at some point you're going to come across them, although Splunk is slowly hiding them better and better from everyone, which is generally a good thing, but you still might have to crack it open every now and then. All right, so a sequence of characters that define a search pattern is a series of words and it makes some sense, but it probably won't until you stew on it for a little while. But what we're really gonna talk about today is a couple of the pieces that involve regex and how to learn how to read them yourself so that you can figure out where they start, where they end, and how to like parse them into pieces that are understandable. And the, uh, there's a couple of piece, main pieces that we're going to talk about today, two of which are characters and character matching, and the other are quantifiers. So character matching, in the trivial case, is nothing more than letters match other letters. So a D or a W or an S just match those literal characters in your stream, a D or a W or an S. Um, when you couple them with a meta character, though, they become character types. So you can start matching the backslash D matches digits. Um, w is for word characters, and we'll go over more of these in the next slide. You don't have to memorize them because you can just Google for regex cheat sheet, and there'll be plenty of options to find. But we're just trying to give you that little bit of an overview right now. So after you use some of these, the next piece is a quantifier, which tells it how many times the previous thing should match something. So you can have different things like zero or more, one or more, or maybe three to five times, you know, whatever it is that you actually need for your data. So. As I said, so there's more than two parts. Probably they're not going to fit into our 30 minute talk though, so we'll have to just go with the two. But maybe if you're lucky, we'll finish in time to be, do a little more. So next, Evie will explain some of the actual matching. All right, so to match a digit, you'd use digits from zero through nine, and that would be backslash D. Backslash W is word characters, A through Z. Well, backslash S is any white space, like spaces or tabs. If you do a capital, like D, W, or S with a backslash, it'll be anything except that. So a dot is any single character, not more, unless you add a star, which is zero if you're not sure it's there and there might be more than one, or a plus if you know it's there and there's more than one of it. See the squiggly brackets on the side? Whatever the number inside of it is, that's how many times it is. Backslash W would be the same if you added a squiggly brackets four, and that would be four word characters. The square brackets here would match any single, not more than one, of the inside characters. Well, if you have a caret inside of the square brackets, it would be anything but not what's inside of it. 
So the carrot outside of the square brackets would mean the beginning of the string, while the dollar sign is the end. Oh, I hate that. All right. So how does Splunk use regular expressions? Now, there's some ways in the back end, as they said, with props.com. Um, we're not going to go into that here, but it's really similar, just a little different context around it. The actual regex part itself is more or less the same thing, other than some escaping differences. But so the, the command itself, we're going to talk about the inline way to use them, which is what I always use when I'm starting out. I've got some data, I've got some fields, they've got a pile of junk in them, and I need to split them out into individual pieces so I can use them as fields. And what we start with is there's an optional piece after the rex command of uh, what the field name is. So if you have, for instance, um, a username field that comes in and it's got Mollerwine, comma rich, and you want to parse that out into first name, last name. Well, hopefully your data already gave you that. But if it didn't, you can do that and you can specify that don't look in all of raw, just look inside that one field. If you don't include that, it just looks through the entire event. So that's followed by something inside quotes. You may or may not have some leading or trailing text, and those are anchoring it into place. So in that case, if it was like username equals following comma rich, and for some reason Splunk didn't parse that out to begin with and make a key value pair, you could include the username equals up here. And it's really important for performance reasons, and also sometimes just to make it so that the person coming after you can read your regular expression, because that gives them a hint as to what you're, what you're doing with it. But then, in order to read them yourself, the next part is around the parentheses. The parentheses just group things together. And what we've grouped in here is an extraction that creates a field name, in this case, name of created field, with a regular expression that you can use to match the text that you want to have pulled out into that field name. And then after it, of course, there's also anchoring text. Sometimes that's a dollar sign to say, and it ends at the end of the string. Sometimes it's other text that just says, yeah, and don't include this bit over here. That's past where we needed it. So, um, yeah, that was it for this page. All right, some examples. So, make results is what it's going to do. Eval my test is naming this is a test string. Rex is the command. While field my test is taking this and analyzing it. So backslash S is a space. So it's not going to do this over here because THIS are word characters, not spaces. So the white space right here is a space, so we're going to look at that so far. New field is what it's going to be categorized under as the field. Is is specific. So there's the S's here. There has to be spaces on the sides of it. Otherwise, it would think if you didn't do these, it would do IS right here, H and space. All right, so another. Um, again, same thing up top, but on the bottom, instead of the S, there's two dots. You guys remember, that was any character. So it would be backslash s, backslash s, spaces on both sides of them. It's only one any character. So there's two of them here. There's going to be too many characters. So if you look up to is, that's two characters with spaces on the sides. And it's the first one in the string. All right. This one, same thing again, but backslash w and two with inside the squiggly brackets. So backslash W is word characters, while squiggly brackets 2 would be how many times there is a word character. So this would be two word characters, spaces. So you want to look up. There's two word characters that is again. It's the first one in the string because there might be more than one. And there's spaces on both sides of it. So is. Do you want to jump to the examples real quick? Sure. Let's do this. We got some examples. Those examples should be right here. All right. So that was just to tell them about make results. It does. Make results is making results. Making results. Right. Great. Great. So. This sets up our example. Change our other tab. Yeah. So this is the top string that we're using. They can't see you pointing here. Eval my test Eval. is naming this is a test string as my test. 
Now we added all of this to make it a little more like it'll work. So Rex is the command while field my test is what we're analyzing over here. The backslash s is a space again and another base backslash s and then is. So it's going to match is. All right, so we have the two dots again, and that matches is. That just proves it. What would happen if you made that four dots? We have that later. What? Don't we have that later? We yeah. might. Yeah, right here. Ha ha ha. <laughs> All right, so we have four dots here, and we have to have spaces on the sides. These dots can be any character, not just word characters or digits. They can be spaces too. So it's going to be is us with the space there because that counts as one word character and one any character. So there you go. Is us. Shouldn't have run all these. All right, and then we have the backslash W two squiggly bracket thingy. So again, it's going to match is because there's two word characters with spaces on the sides. Now, if we use a four in there, Grr. what does that change it to? Oh, wait, don't we have that? Yeah, we do. Ha -ha. All right, so this is going to drive me crazy. All right, so it's four word characters, not just any character. So what it would do, it would catch tests right here because there's spaces on the side is a they are word characters but the space right here is not so it's not going to catch that it's going to catch test which has four word characters in a row and spaces on the sides so don't think it's this oh wait all right and there was all right so let's go to i'm going to keep messing you up there we go rerun our template All right. I got it. No, you didn't. Example. All right. So, backslash D plus here is one digit or more. So, it's same thing, but we have, I live at 123 Main Street. The backslash S's are spaces, so it's going to look at the only three digits there are in this string right here. One, two, three. So it's going to match one, two, three over here. Now, same thing up top again, except he changed the name, which very much confused me. So street addresses a new field instead of new field. Wow. So he has same street address, same thing as up here, but he added this. That's going to name the street. Now, since it's from left to right, it's not going to match one, two, three, or anything at before it. It's going to match one, two, three under street address, and street is going to be main street. Because it's any character, zero, or more of it. And one, two, three is already there, so it's not going to look before it going to look after it because again it's just like reading a book it's going to not skip backwards it's going to skip forward okay so you just shorten this up so ignore that so we have the same thing again but we don't want the dot so what he did was everything but one moment so what he did was everything but a period. So he did zero or more of it. That way it would catch everything but and more. All right, now boring one. So what he's doing is run ID is showing the start of the string and it's not gonna catch that because it's not in these like half circular bracket thingies. Yeah, sure. 
All right, so run ID is the new field that we're going to be categorizing under. And we're going to catch everything but colons. So it's not going to catch this or the colon. So it's going to catch A87973 and zero more of it. There you go. And then we're ignoring the colons right now, adding those to the pile of trash right by run ID. And run GUID is our new field next to run ID. And we're going to catch everything but this dash right here. So it's going to catch all of these really long string of letters. And zero more of it. And then we're leaving 97C6C to fend for itself. Examples. Let's go back to the example pages. La, 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 la. What he said. There we go. <laughs> it was music for your enjoyment while we were switching. All right. So now we're doing the whole thing that I had before everything else. So it's catching Main Street dot. Not just Main Street, because dot still equals any characters. And it's also matching one, two, three, because that was in this one. All right. So now we don't want to catch the dot. So we have the square brackets with the caret, which would equal everything but the dot. And zero more of it. So Main Street, there's no dot there. Just ignore that. Um, and then we have the really long one. So run ID dash, we're ignoring. So we'll ignore that. Well, A87973 is what we're catching right here because it's everything but the colons. And it's putting it in run ID as a field. Run GUID is another field. While the dash here is being ignored and everything but it and more then zero, zero more. So it's going to catch all of this right here because we don't want to catch the dash. And then we're relieving the rest to fend for itself. That's a different one. All right, back to our presentation real quick. That's a start with again. All right. Well, lucky you guys, we actually have a little bit more time left, so we can keep going for a bit. Oh, we do. One of the other useful things to use is uh, regular expressions are underpinning a lot of pieces. They were actually designed back in, I think, the 1950s. They came into common usage with the rise of the Unixes through the 60s and 70s. Um, and then the Linuxes have picked them up, and now it's in all kinds of products. Notepad++, plus plus. there's a lot of text editors you can you can um, download and run that actually can do regular expressions, search and interface. The, uh, but one of the handier things to do is use, in, it's actually a different command, says stream editor of the Unix systems, which is developed again kind of in uh, kind of Another character here, like a pipe or a letter, like an H. Right? It doesn't really matter. 
So you follow that with a string to match, which could be a regular expression or it could be a, a physical regular string, and then the replacement, what to replace it with. And we'll get into back references in just a bit, which they'll kind of make a lot of sense once you see how to use these and we hit it. There's also a spot back here for options at the very tail end. Um, I'm only aware of one real option that gets used with any regularity, and that is the G for global. If you don't include that, said mode Rex will go through the string, find the thing to match, and if it finds it, it will replace it, and it's done with that, and it'll go on to the next event. With the G, it doesn't stop there. It goes through the string to match. If it finds it, it replaces it, and then it picks up and continues down the rest of the string. So it'll just keep replacing all of the occurrences of it in one string. So it's very handy to know what that G stands for for that. And off to some examples. Were you doing these? Yeah. Excellent. So what's our problem with our first one, huh? I know it's boring when I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a new one. Yeah. My card number is a lot of numbers. Okay, I don't like that card number. All right, so we're doing field my test and mode said. Never understood that. And we're trying to replace the 7777 with an... Your mouse. Oh yeah, good idea. With four X's instead of four sevens. So it's said mode. A substitute. Substitute. And the sevens all are right here and they're going to be cut out to do this. This doesn't help. This right here does not help. All right, so now I get the rest of these. Do not understand the first one. So now what we're gonna do is we are changing, we wanna change the last four numbers, but this is not gonna work. Because backslash D plus is digits plus, but you're not telling it where you want these digits to be. So it's gonna match these and replace them with four X's instead of the four sevens because those are the first ones to find. So now you're trying to anchor it at the end. So the S is whatever he said. Substitute. And the back substitute. The backslash D plus is digits plus while the dollar sign is at the end of the string, not the beginning. Carrot, if you want it at the beginning, it'll just match it, but you can also put a carrot. And then the XXX is going to re be replacing the 7777. Oh, geez, that's going to get annoying. All right. Can you do one more page? You want me to do the back references? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, back references. All right, remember what we said way early in the beginning, which is the parentheses just group things. So it looked like they were, they're both more and less important than that, but that's really what they do. So. Here's an example of using them, and what we do is we match through, we've got four of these backslash D pluses separated by our dashes. So the dashes will match, the backslash D pluses will match each group of these digits. All right, because I've used parentheses around each one, it doesn't do anything when they're all alone with them, except it creates the system so that you can refer to those again. That's why they're called back references. And you get to them with backslash one, two, three, and four in this case. This is the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. So pretty straightforward once you know what they're there for and everything. So in this case though, here's our substitute, our divider. So here's our other divider. It's not this backslash, it's the forward slash. We have our four sets of digits, one, two, three, four. And we're actually flipping them around in order. This is why my arm is very carefully in the way here, hopefully. So we're doing the fourth one first, a dash, the third one, a set of X's, and then the first and this is actually what comes out the other end, which we have an example of doing this. So there's no reason to do, as I explained before, there's no reason to do them in order. You can reuse them. I could put backslash one, dash, backslash one, and just repeat that first set of digits all over again. Do you have an like. example? We do have an example of this, don't we? I'm betting it's there. Is that it? Ah, no, that's, no, that's my it. grouping one, which I don't think we have time for. So. Is that it? That's it. This is it. This is it. So again, we can change this around. Oh. How did we do this? What did you do? I just... No, you got it in presentation mode. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. You did the easy thing, which doesn't work all the time. All right. So as you can see, we do the same exact, or same exact sample right here. 
and we end up doing the X's for the replacement, and you can see that it does it in exactly the reverse order, seven, seven, six. And we can change this to any way we want and make these all threes, and in which case, it's the third octet, six, 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 should be in everywhere. And there they are, with the, that one replaced. So, and there's no reason that this has to match anything. We can make it anything we want in there, including nothing. So I think, let's go back, we have just hit the end of our time. So let's go to our ending slide. Nope. Thank you very much for listening. Well done. <laughs>